Hello, and welcome to episode one of Owlbear Soup. I am uh, one of your hosts. I'm Justin. And I'm your other host, Rich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a, a, a new platform for us. We've just joined the Saving Throw team, and we're very excited to be here. Um, and thank you so much for everyone who's come to hang out with us with our, our, our first show. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I hope you are ready for, for, we've got some news coming up. We got a review of uh, the world of Eam. Um, we've also got, uh, of course, our two fantastic guests later today. We have Aki and we have Teos um, for some fun segments. And so, uh, so stick around. We've got lots, lots of good stuff coming up. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, just, let's kick it off a little bit. So um, yeah. this show is a new show to Saving Third Network. We've done this show before. Uh, in different versions, and then uh, we've both uh, we've both podcast before separately together. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to we used to both individually be uh, hosts of the Going Last podcast. Uh, that was quite a while ago, but uh, <laughs> it, and neither of us were hosts at the same time. So you know right. that, that's right. that's fun too. So so here we are, uh, <laughs> and uh, we're excited to talk to you, talk to everyone about 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 uh, tabletop games, about board games um about miniatures we're gonna talk about minis today i love minis <laughs> yeah, and right? uh you know just basically chat with all about all the cool stuff that we like and uh, hopefully you all like it too um and in, in addition one of our things that we like to do because uh we're both we're bo both rpg nerds uh at the the, the last portion of the <laughs> i know right <laughs> on this network uh the, the last portion of the show is going to be dedicated to kind of like outlining and thinking about a new adventure or encounter or something that you can kind of take to your table and play with at home exactly yeah <laughs> so I, th I think that's a quick introduction to the show hey rich why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick since this is our first time Me? chatting with this new and amazing audience Absolutely. Um, I'm Rich. You can find me on online at uh, Armalina in different places. Uh, I'm a longtime teacher, game designer. And yeah, I think between the two of us, uh, at the very least, we've been doing this for like 10 years, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about games and Kickstarter is one of my particular fascinations. So we'll see some of that coming up. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, like I, I said, my background is that, uh, you know, I've done a lot of podcasting. I've, 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 you know, got the chance to talk to a lot of great game designers in the past, and I'm hoping to bring some of that experience and some of those connections mm -hmm. to this network. Uh, me, personally, I've been playing D&D &D for, oh, well over half my life, probably two-thirds of my life at this point, uh, and, yeah. you know, other role-playing games. Um, in addition, I'm a huge pirate nerd. Uh, and also I DJ here on Twitch too. So, uh, you know, that, 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 that's my passions. That's the things that I do. Perfect. Perfect. Whew. Well, yeah, well, we're excited to, uh, to meet all of you and we'll be checking the chat and hopefully, um, you know, especially later on when you've got suggestions for our adventures, uh, we'll get to meet you a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that brings us to, uh, to our first segment, uh, in which, uh, I will have to look at our notes because I forgot which <laughs> which order we decided to put things in. But I think we're going to talk about our gaming. We we uh, oh, right. we are we are we are playing. Uh, uh, we play some games together, uh, not just video games, but role playing games. Uh, mm -hmm. And specifically, we are in this fantastic uh, adventure. Uh, we are we are playing Pathfinder Two. This is my first uh, my first dive into Pathfinder Two. It's been it's been right. interesting. Yeah. It's a it's a wild game, right? We both played Pathfinder one quite a bit, uh, you know, back in the D and D three point five days uh, and after, and uh, and Pathfinder two is kind of the the new uptake, which I just missed while D and D fifth ed was going on, just switched over completely, and we wanted to try it out. So um, we are playing right now uh, War for the Crown, which is like all about Taldor, um, a huge uproar as uh, as the Let's see. Now I got to go back in time. Uh, the emperor is about to create an heir. The emperor is killed, and this other person stands up and says, "I'm the heir now." Um, so it's like political upheaval, which is yeah. pretty fun. We had we started with like social encounters where we are um, using our skills to kind of sway the imperial senate, which I don't think is the right term, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's this... a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm playing a mage, a, an elven mage. I tend to I tend to like to play mages whenever I first dive into a new RPG system, mm -hmm. uh, specifically because I, I I think they're complicated. They tend to be a little bit more complicated, and I enjoy kind of stretching my brain a little bit around a new system whenever mm -hmm. I get into it. 
And, uh, you know, it, so so this is a published adventure from Paizo. Yep. And the last one they did for Pathfinder 1. Because uh, yeah, it sets it, the new tone for Pathfinder 2. <laughs> and it's and it, it's a conversion. So we are into the second book. We have a manor in, near Lothied. Um, and uh, uh -huh. it, it, in our most recent adventure... Uh, we uh, we we had a little bit of a run in with some of the uh, some of the local authorities and uh, and the local vigilante, the Night Swan. Right. So we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, we are all undercover at this point, right? We're in this manor house pretending to be the uh, the nobility who's supposed to run it and run this town, but we're not. We're <laughs> we're uh, um, let's see supporters of the new empress and trying to convince everyone around to join the cause including the count of this region who is kind of a jerk um so we're about to like start a big protest uh we're turning into vigilantes to go and reduce their power it's wild because that's not a game i get to play very often so i'm, mm -hmm. I'm really digging in with my my champion of art art and beauty shaylin um like a little paladin of art i mean it's fantastic yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and yes and then i got stabbed a whole lot recently by the night swan this vigilante who thinks i'm a real noble uh, but i am <laughs> actually a very real noble <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine <laughs> yeah also uh you know the dm chris he's doing a fantastic job uh r converting this and and bringing mm -hmm. some really interesting ways to role play that i'd never thought of before um, into the game. Um, specifically, yeah. he often has the other players playing NPCs. Uh, uh. And I know this is something a lot of people <laughs> do, but I've never experienced it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've had a ton of fun with that that whole experience. Yeah. Um, Right. Yeah. This last time I got a note on Discord real quick, which was like, hey, I, I would, I'd like you to run this character, uh, the Archbanker of Abadar. So this like beacon of the law here in in town, like Abadar is the god of civilization in, in Galarian. Um, and it was great. Uh, I got to <laughs> I wanted to harness. Um, I started calling NP or the PC's citizen because uh, I wanted to harness that uh, that moment in the new Star Trek movie, you know, where like. Kirk is like driving the car off the edge and then like the, the officer stops and goes like citizen. And you're like, Oh gosh, <laughs> that person's <laughs> claiming authority right now. Um, I was trying to get a little bit of that in there and it was fun. I like playing yeah. other P other characters in other PC stories. It's very fun. Yeah. And uh, what, one of the characters in our, our group uh, Shams played by our friend Fletcher, he, uh, he's part of this neat um like underground sword fighting uh membership thing and uh, -huh. uh one of one of the fun things is 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 we each got to also make two of these people of this secret sword fighting society right. and at some point we are going to challenge him with our our secondary characters and i think that's going to be a ton of fun Great. I'm not going to talk about my characters yet, just in case Fletcher yeah. is watching, but uh, one of them is going to be my old venture captain from Pathfinder Society. I'm very excited about bringing it to life in this new version. Um, overall, Pathfinder 2 has been fun. So Yeah, yeah. No, I've really it's enjoyed good. Pathfinder 2. I think I think it's a fun system. Um, also, you know, and, and I... It, this is one of those campaigns where it's like I'm already like dreading the end of it. Like, you yeah. know, the, the the person who's playing Professor Caster, uh, he's a uh, a failed alchemist, and uh, he's so miserable <laughs> in the best and most charming way. Mm -hmm. And then we have a uh, um, you know Rafe the Hunter, and uh, also you know very very a very uppity elf, yeah. and uh, he plays it so well <laughs> and so charmingly that it's. It's it's fantastic. It's it's really yeah. a great group, and uh, I I look forward to us talking to you all more about it as as we continue through this. Mm -hmm. It's a good game. We got real lucky finding it on Roll Twenty. We got good people. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it it was it was definitely it was definitely solid. I uh, and uh, yeah, I I never thought I would enjoy playing a Pathfinder game as much as I am. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very much a D and D <laughs> nerd. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, for me this is a, a good break, right? Because uh, my my regular job is running sessions of D and D for kids. So this week I ran <laughs> seven battles in the the great arena um, for uh, for our young heroes, and it was a ton of fun. Um, and uh, it was just it was good because it, it got pretty dark in a couple places. Like the kids are fighting, and I had to 
had to. Uh, they, there's a big evil person making them all fight. It's just, it's kind of terrifying. But now they're they're getting like the glimmers of how they're going to get out of this, which is very fun. Uh, we're midway through our week long or our, you know five day long uh, campaign. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then um, yeah, and I'm also eventually going to start running my Dungeon and Mad Mage uh, campaign yeah, again. Yeah. So I'll talk to a little bit about that. <laughs> I'm hoping to start that back up this month after a month off. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I think I think that that covers covers our first uh, <laughs> s- segment where we talk about all our gaming stuff. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do a quick dive into the news. Fantastic. Well, uh, first up on my end is uh, I wanted to take a, a quick look at Coyote and Crow, which is a, uh, a fantastic RPG that showed up on Kickstarter last month. Uh, it just finished funding and. Um, it is the seventh RPG of all time to hit the million dollar mark on Kickstarter, which is uh, wild. <laughs> it's just so yeah. much. Uh, it's it's fantastic, and it's it's sharing that honor with things like you know Matt Col- Colville's games, uh, Strongholds, uh, Kingdoms Warfare, and more. Um, the One Ring role playing game, the second edition, that was last month, um, and then the Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns. We talked about those both last month, and uh, and did. that one for me was like whoa. Um, it's very cool. Um, but Coyote and Crow specifically is a, an RPG about an uncolonized uh, America created by a team of natives with uh, with native design in mind. So it's it's uh, it's meant to be this this science fiction fantasy fusion. It looks just incredible, and everything I've read about it on the campaign sounds great. So I was so excited seeing this project like on day one get started, start building momentum, and it just never ever stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, it, I, I uh, did you back that one? I did. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Well, uh, <laughs> let me know when you're you're ready to play it. I will. Uh, it, it looks super exciting to me. They uh, one of my favorite updates they did was uh, an ode to the humble D12, the uh, the most maligned and underused of dice. <laughs> um, and it is the core of the Coyote and Crow system. So that was very cool to see as well. Um, it's just it's it's beautiful. The art looks fantastic, and the team that's building it is is really passionate about the entire thing. Um, I just couldn't be more excited about an upcoming RPG. <laughs> the, I'm glad uh, they hit the million mark. <laughs> and, they're, and they're and they're absolutely right. The D12 is very neglected. I was I was yeah. thinking about that. I was like, how many how many times do I have the chance to use a D12 in any of my home games, right, uh, or at the table at all? No, I I love that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the first, oh, go ahead. Excuse me. Go, no, go for it. Oh, I was just going to move on to the next segment, but if you, or uh, uh, news item, but if you're still talking about uh, Coyote Crow, do it. I could gush, but no, no, no. Check it out uh, on Kickstarter. You can read all their updates and see all the news. Um, I am certain you're going to be able to get that game um, <laughs> in the future as well if you miss the Kickstarter. It, that's just, it's too big to just stop at this point. <laughs> right. Um, so one of, one of my favorite favorite uh, animated films is Zootopia. I really love that movie. That movie was okay. a ton. Of, it was a ton of fun. I I love that movie. I love the musical numbers. I love the story. I love everything going on about it. And Silver Games has released a new RPG supplement that takes place in you know a more modern futuristic setting, uh, where you get to play out your favorite uh, anthropomorphic animal characters uh-huh. nice. uh this is called tales of the city so uh, the idea of this is is, is you kind of create a pulpy like uh action flick mixed with a cartoon and you know and it's it's based all on the pathfinder system so it's it's totally comp- compatible with other 5e uh, uh f- right. it's, it's compatible with 5e first edition and uh second edition pathfinder games so a lot of different variations for it and there's new feats, new gear, new spells, a bunch of stuff. It it, it looks like a, a fun way to play uh, that fox character that you've always wanted to play, or you know, yeah, like right. a, a a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I you know this. It, it reminds me a little bit of the idea of like the big eye, small mouth. Um, not that I've I ever played that game, but you know the 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 idea yeah, yeah. behind it, where it's like you get to live out these 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 you know your anime uh, your anime fantasies or or you're you're uh trying to be an animal you know yeah exactly right. like like uh, like like in chat you know uh <laughs> they've always wanted to play a draft and uh i i kind of want to play an aardvark uh but also Ooh. a draft 
See, for me, it was the moment Hero Forge added the ability to play a fox folk and and have like nine tails if you wanted to. If you want your nine tailed fox, oh, there yeah. you are. Um, could be which suddenly suddenly meant you could be a nine tailed elephant. You could be a nine tailed anything. Oh, no. uh, it was pretty great. So more, more, more. <laughs> um, so what animal? You, so you would be a fox folk if you were to uh, pick an animal? Squirrel, fox. Squirrel. Um, oh, that's right. Ooh, squirrel. I forgot or, squirrels. I mean, squirrels are great. On. I love um, actually, one of my favorite characters I've played in recent history is an otter folk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, DM's Guild is a lot of really fun things for Fifth Head, and otter folk was one from a couple years back. Um, uh, good designer. It's it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, definitely if you if you if you like this kind of style of play, check out uh, you know Tales of the City from uh, from Silver Games. I. Uh, Oh yeah, Redwall. That's a good call. Like I, I, I love the yeah. idea of Redwall. I love Mouse Guard. I love the Mouse Guard oh. RPG art book yep. or artwork. Um, I haven't gotten to play chance to play that one either. So if anyone wants to run some Mouse Guard, rich, um, <laughs> I would totally be down to play. Just because I have all the books, Justin. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, well, next up for me is, uh, uh, there is a, well, Modiphius is putting out the Fallout RPG. There's a rundown, kind of like a first look uh, that I found on EN World that was pretty fantastic. They're getting uh, review copies of the PDF. I want it. Um, <laughs> and uh, one of the things I'm excited about is I've just played every Fallout. You know, it's kind of, I, I like the post-apocalyptic look. I'm used to playing it back in the days where it felt very turn-based uh, rather than kind of like the you know, FPS version from the latest ones. Um, so I'm excited to see what they did, what they decided to, to keep and use. Um, they use Vault 111 on their artwork, so I'm guessing it's skewing more towards new. Um, but uh, it is using a system which I find very intriguing as well, which I would like to play. It is the 2D20 system, um, where you are trying to roll 2D20 and get underneath your attributes to get a certain number of successes. It sounds wild. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just, uh, I, you know, as a longtime math teacher, I just want to see how people use dice to do like fun probabilities of events succeeding or failing. So I want to know what's up there. Um, it's a great team of designers, and it looks like you get to play some pretty interesting um, character types. It looks like Brotherhood of Steel is on the table. A ghoul. Cool. You could be a super mutant. Um, oh. You could be a Mr. Mr. Handy robot. Um, I, I, be, I mean, <laughs> I, I totally want to be a Mr. Handy robot. That's, that's really the one that, that I want to be. I mean, Brotherhood of Steel gives me that, like, uh, you know, I could play like a Rifts character. Is that what's going on here? You know, it sounds <laughs> kind, of, kind of amazing. Um, and there's also, of course, Survivor and Vault Dweller. Um, you know, you have to have those. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love giving these like major factions a huge importance as, you know, in terms of character classes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I once played a when I was, you know, back, back, back in the olden days when uh, AOL chat rooms were were the place to play role playing games. I was, I was in a Fallout game, uh, and I think it was based off a D six system, uh, <laughs> but it was also, you know, very much the top down style of Fallout. So, yeah. so what would happen is like once a week, it was played out uh, over email on AOL. Uh, once mm -hmm. a week, we would get this new like ASCII style map that this person had made with like dashes and periods and stuff, and it was a top-down view, and it was almost like yeah. playing NetHack. <laughs> Fallout NetHack on AOL. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So you know, hi, I've 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 seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, it sounds like a lot of fun. I really want to check it out just because it's a world that I enjoy and I've always enjoyed. So uh, hopefully we'll get a look at that soon. Yeah. Um, so um, we're going to talk about minis a little bit later with Teos. And I, I do think we are going to uh, absolutely uh, talk about this thing. Uh, so at <laughs> nearly 15 inches tall and 30 inches wide, coming in September from WizKids the largest official Tiamat miniature ever <laughs> for only $399. Yeah. <laughs> I like that it says slated hits uh, store shelves in September of this year available for pre-order. Wizard Kids mm -hmm. uh, online shop. The miniature will be priced under $400. <laughs> 
I, it's be I personally three hundred and ninety nine dollars. <laughs> right. I really like that. You know, when you talk about minis, you talk about like the centimeters of the base, and this is a mini that you should really express in terms of feet or like right. I guess meters if you want to stay metric. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. I I feel like this is one that you have to uh, present uh, the mass of it. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Yeah, this this isn't so much you put it on the table. It's set on a table over there, like overlooking your game room forever. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this this, this gets its own sculpture. <laughs> it gets its own chair at the table. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Um no, I'm excited about it. I don't know that I will be purchasing it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm excited to see it. It's it, I, I think it kind of sits in the same area as those really cool um things that they have to decorate your room where it's like the mounted mm -hmm. head of like the owl bear or the the dragon or any of those things like i think it yeah. fits in that same area of collectible for me because i really Great. don't see me like <laughs> buying this huge mini to slap on a table mm -hmm. uh, right you know a yeah. 200 millimeter clear round base right yeah uh, you know and like it and just mm -hmm. for for reference you know here, here's your 20 millimeter <laughs> mini <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, oh man. It's it's amazing for me just because, you know, I've bought one of these. I bought the the Eberron Skyship. Um it's the only kind of like super fancy mini set I ever got. And I did it basically to take some of my favorite minis and just put them on a stage. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're up there. <laughs> you know, my favorite characters flying around forever. Um yep. and yeah. uh this could be a cool one for a similar sort of thing, you know. You uh you build your scene, you put Tiamat there. Um, is Tiamat actually a villain at the moment in any current D&D storylines? I mean, Rise of Tiamat. Well, sure. But I mean, that's that's a couple of years out, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it might be something that it will be referenced in like Candlekeep if, or something. I haven't read all of the adventures in Candlekeep. Oh, fair enough. Of course, there's always the rumor about a dragon supplement, you know, that type of stuff. Exactly. Ooh, and they were testing some draconic things recently on Unearthed Arcana. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, so as far as I know, it, it, it's it's something like that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to ask Teos whenever we we, we, we uh, get over to mm -hmm. him, too, because I know he's really in touch with with everything that's going on with the minis. Right. But yeah, sure. it looks it looks pretty uh, pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> very nice um well i'm gonna stick around on the the kickstarter bandwagon for a second um i'm kind of excited that uh that on kickstarter right now is a book called uh inferno dante's guide to hell for fifth ed this is a group of italian designers who have just decided yeah they're gonna take the inferno series the whole thing and they're gonna turn it into D. &D. they're gonna give you maps dm screens they're gonna give you you know massive books with all the different creatures you might see i mean this is uh this is a, a you know a very classic style of hell, and they're going to bring it to life. It's pretty wild. <laughs> um, That's amazing. It's let's see, uh, getting the PDF version of Inferno, um, and they have other things, you know, different stretch goals, um, untold tales, you know, just to add breadth to the the world that they've got. Um, but the regular PDF of the system is going for it looks like a thirty five US, which is not too bad. Um, yeah. And overall, the campaign is at three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. So they're doing fine. They're just fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's kind of cool to see. I think this because you know this is something I just remember from. Uh, I think I read all these in high school, um, mm -hmm. and it was just like, ooh, creativity going all over the place. I mean, for one of the strangest books I've ever read, but I'm excited to see it in D and D. Honestly, <laughs> I yeah, I I, I will say <laughs> that. Oh yeah, yeah. someone in the chat. Someone in the chat uh, yeah. even mentions it. Someone tried to gamify Dante's Inferno. That's a DJ mm -hmm. regular. Uh, they're mentioning that uh, someone tried to gamify Dante's Inferno. And I, yeah. I think I kind of remember that one because I, I whenever you brought it up, I was like, eh, did they do that before? <laughs> but did they do poorly yeah. at that before? I've been uh, scared off everything since the movie. Or what is the, the 90s movie or whatever? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was uh, that? Oh man, or or uh, I don't know. I'm I'm envisioning uh, Pierce Brosnan at this point, but it's been so long I, mean, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, I'm always kind of envisioning Pierce Brosnan, but that's that's know, a good point. point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
anyway, so so I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of cool to see it out again. Uh, I'm I'm curious how much source material they're going to be able to build out of this and turn it from a story into like you know a campaign setting. That's kind of interesting. Uh, by, for me. by the way, we've 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 already been co corrected. Dante's uh, peak. It was Dante's <laughs> peak. <laughs> Same. It's it's just inverted, right? You're just going up a mountain instead of down. Going up instead. <laughs> uh yes please uh to aubrey cello in the chat uh can they add a pole you slide down uh as a stretch goal so, i mean i'm, right, I'm just... totally into it <laughs> <laughs> a little elevator to go to any level you want yeah absolutely yeah. um maybe it'll just be like dante's mad mage mad maze maze of the mad mage dante there we go <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know anyway that's up your alley check it out <laughs> yeah let's see and, and you also have this uh barovian born and raised oh gosh i've got so much today i was looking around on dm's guild um uh for folks that don't know the dungeon masters guild is a website that uh, allows basically anyone to write a book put it up online and get paid for it using a lot of the properties that wizards of the coast has out right now so if you want to write an adventure that is set in barovia if you want to use art that already exists um you know and use all the cool spells from xanathar's guide the dm's guild is the only way to do that um nice and it's pretty pretty easy um so i've published a few things there i review stuff on there a lot and in honor of the next book coming out, which I believe I'm going to lose this, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Is that it? Uh, yes, I believe okay. so, yeah. Um, there's a new resurgence of Ravenloft material. There's actually a ton of it on there already. Oh, I see my... I'm pixelating over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to, uh, welcome to OBS Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I'll well, get you. Go, go ahead and keep talking about it. And as I'll, long as you uh, can I'll... still hear me. <laughs> um I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this book is called Barovian Born and Raised. And the whole deal is that uh, Ravenloft is is this setting where it's it's set in the mists, right? And generally, your characters are not from the mists. You are from outside. You get walked through a portal, and you are locked into the demi-plane of dread. And Strahd tries to ruin your life, and you have to stop Strahd. Um, and it kind of presents the people of Barovia as as very hollow. Most like a lot of them are soulless specifically, and they're kind of controlled. It's almost like you've walked into a story, and I, it's like the hex. There you go. If you watched Wandavision, Wandavision, it's the hex, right? Oh. <laughs> Some of those people just aren't aren't doing nothing um, unless they're being specifically directed. Um, there's quite a few free folk who do have souls and are acting who have walked into the mists and gotten stuck here, right? But mm -hmm. um, this is a reimagining of the entire setting saying, what if we just said the people who live here don't like it and want to fix it? Which for me fixes so much of, of Ravenloft, right? It's the idea that you've come to this realm, you look around and you're like, oh, all these people, they live in squalor. They're so sad. I will save them all. You know, let's get rid of that. Let's just let the people rise up and <laughs> battle for themselves. Yeah. And this book is all about that. Uh, Gives you ways to uh, to pick any of the the you know the peoples that already live in Ravenloft or reasons why you know your Goliath might be here, um, and uh, and give you lots and lots of background material to go with. So you can be from this town or that town or that town and have these professions or whatever else, um, and then notes for how to change the story so that uh, that makes sense. <laughs> for example, it says, "Hey, what about we pretend most people actually have souls and are free willed and are fine." <laughs> This is a place people live, not a story land uh, for mm -hmm. you to encounter. Um, and for me, that was that's a really cool idea. I think you know Ravenloft is is neat for a you know horror themed D and D setting, but I, I never really liked that you know nightmare on Elm Street. Like we travel here and now we encounter. Like some people just live here. Let's make the story yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 really cool. Also, uh, I just want to point out. Um... Uh, it looks like uh, I'm going to butcher this because I butcher screen names, but Simath has uh, subscribed for 42 months. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Owlbear yeah. equals best bear. We agree. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, man. 42 months. Uh, That's great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's right. see. I, let's see. I think you got one more thing on your list. I can't stop. I can't stop. We were talking about Kickstarter before the show, and that totally um, brought up uh, a very incredible kind of role-playing game that showed up on Kickstarter, which is The Darkest House by Monty Cook Games. Um, I I love Monty Cook Games and the, the stuff they make. The cipher system is incredible. And uh, 
but this is not something for the cipher system specifically it is a a haunted mansion world uh that the darkest house i mean i don't even know how to describe it and i've played some of it um it's a mysterious house with all sorts of rooms and features and and tricks and you have to move kind of through it and investigate this and what they're designing specifically is something that can be used for any system it's the house it's a it's a program it's a computer program and you as the dm um can basically open it up and click on the rooms to move to the next place. It'll give you all the information that you see in there normally. If you want to investigate the the eerie voices, the DM can easily like click on that and and know what that's for or give you keys that lead you farther into the house. It's it's incredible. It's like it's a campaign set. It'll, you know, it's a an encounter setting. I don't even know how we describe it, how broad it's going to be, because the Kickstarter changed that. Like the more funding they got, the bigger the house gets. Um, uh, but ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, what a cool idea! <laughs> it is. It's a really cool idea that I did not know about until today. So I, I missed the Kickstarter. Mm. However, I'm sure I will be able to find it elsewhere. Right, and this is this is finishing up. They're delivering in May, right? They've all there's a demo on here that you can download and play around with it, and see if it's for you. Uh, I imagine that you'll be able to pick this up now that the campaign is over as well, because uh, Monty Cook Games likes to put their cool stuff out there, and this is, I mean. Uh, this got brought up uh, as well as like, uh, oh my gosh, Invisible Sun. There it is, which for a lot of people felt like a, you know, a luxury, this wonderful book with all of these, these cool facets and ideas. And, uh, and this feels very similar. Like this is, this is different than your regular D and D product or whatever. Uh, if horror is your thing and you, you have to go play this demo and just see what it's like, <laughs> Because yeah. uh, its theme, its setting, the whole way it's showing to you presents this horror experience in a really cool way. That's awesome. I'm, I, yeah, I, I, I look forward to kind of digging into that. Uh, I realized there was a both a Mac and a PC version to download to kind of check out the 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 app or whatever. Uh, yeah. But I downloaded the wrong version while we were getting set up, so um, oh, no. I will have to go back. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot I was at, in front of my PC instead of my Mac, which I normally am. Gotcha. Um, so um, I just wanted to do a, a, a couple of quick uh, announcements before we move on to. Uh, Series trying to talk to me before we move on to our reviews <laughs> uh, portion of this uh, uh, sure. our review segment. I just wanted to shout out uh, the clips of the week. Uh, they are they're up, um, and uh, you should you should definitely check them out. Uh, that's our 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 friend DJ Regular, and uh, yeah, if you check them out, they're on the SavingThrowShow.com, and then just look for the clips of the week. Um, some great clips from New Pantheon, as well as the Broken Pack this week. Things are looking good. Also, make sure you swing over there, uh, over to the site, and check out the Patreon. Uh, there are some changes coming, but uh, you definitely want to be informed of these changes that are happening. Uh, they are going to uh, be checking out. Up, up. You, you'll want to check out patreoncom Saving Throw Show. Absolutely. And uh, keep up with the news because the 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 adventurers are gathering. Uh, you want to join the society soon, the exploration society. You want, yeah, exactly. Oh, it, perfect. Thank you uh, for tossing that in the chat. If you look at the Patreon, join the exploration society. So members are going to get sweet pins, swags. Uh, we're writing some one page adventures. There's a lot of really great things coming. So make sure and join up. It's uh, it's totally, it's it's totally <laughs> sweet. I've, it's I've, exciting. I've, it is. I've I've seen some stuff in the background that I uh, you know, I can't can't yet talk about. I don't have permission yet, but uh, when I do have permission, <laughs> you'll hear about it here. <laughs> Perfect. Good. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Are we ready to uh, dive into the land of Eam? I'm very ready. Oh, right. I said world earlier. The land of Eam. <laughs> oh, is, is it the world of Eam? No, oh, it's land. Know. You got it it's right. It's land of Eam. I had it right. I good. had it right. Uh, We've just been saying Eam. <laughs> e <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, this is... Um, so I talked a little bit uh, ago about um, the Tales from the City kind of uh, tapping into that love of... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I talk about my love of cartoons, uh, my love of playing weird characters, mm -hmm. and um, oh, DJ Regular, we'll shout you out again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> repeatedly. Um, repeatedly. <laughs> the, the, the clips of the week are awesome. Um, mm -hmm. 
so the land of our uh, land of Eam is another is a fantasy rpg it feels very cartoony uh it feels a lot yeah. like um adventure time to me uh i i dare say it's probably a little bit inspired here or there <laughs> and um and, and not 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 like it, it's it's great right um so anyway i've prattled on a little bit mm. uh, why don't you why don't you kick this review off Cool, cool. I have been reading through this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I'm a big fan of what's going on here in the land of Eam. Um, this uh, this fantasy RPG, I'm going to say right at the start, this is a, a rule book that's in beta. So uh, so the materials you're about to see are all, all beta form. Um, but even so, there's some awesome stuff in here. <laughs> um, land of Eam is, is written by uh, and designed by the creators of the Rickety Stitch. Um, uh, and oh, this one, and the gelatinous goo, um, graphic novel series for kids. Um, I love this. The the art in here by Ben Costa and James Parks is fantastic, or, or the writing. It's all just this really cool stuff with characters that I enjoy already just by seeing the pictures. They're they're dynamic. They got stuff going on. Uh, I just I just want to play this 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 penguin <laughs> at a masquerade. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, I, I like the uh, I. I... Oh god, I, I like the weird goblin character with the the mask. It looks like he's ready to get in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a battle of the bards. Exactly. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Um the big thing I wanted to start by talking about is actually the the dice mechanic. That's kind of as I look at a game system. Excuse me, that's where I start. Um mm -hmm. in this one, D12s. We're back. Um yeah. <laughs> this is taking the best of a couple different worlds, I think, for, for role-playing games. Um, I'll tell you right at the start that this, this is a game about, uh, from what I've read, exploration. There's a lot of, of all of you kind of searching around for the next thing. Like, what's over there? Let's go find out. Um, exploration is a big part of this game and that kind of adventurous spirit. And with that in mind, it makes sense that the mechanics of the game are based in not fully qualified, uh, unqualified successes, right? <laughs> we see this D12 plus skill. Um, you'll see complete failure, failure with a plus, woohoo, or success with a <laughs> twist, yeah. <laughs> um, success and then complete success, of course. It's kind of our, our critical there. And I I love this. I don't play with these very often, but even playing D&D, &D, which has a yes or no I always, I, I, I want this, you know, if someone yes. just hits the DC barely, I don't put a twist on it, but I describe it that way. You know, you just barely scrape your way in. Um, mm -hmm. If someone just fails, you always want to be like, oh, you, you know, you were so close. Uh, the system lets you succeed or fail with those things in mind. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I, I, I would love to see more systems kind of work that way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of that in Pathfinder too, but I, I do like the... I, I like that this one it's 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 failure with a plus i yes. that's the specific one that i really enjoy yep. um it you know success with a twist is great too but i i like the idea of failure with a plus if you look at the example uh mm -hmm. like for picking a locked door you fail to pick the locked door but you notice another more dangerous way inside right that's that's <laughs> the kind of stuff i love yes when it comes to games it's so good um it's right tricking some guards Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's not just a yes and. It's also huh. a uh, no but system, <laughs> right? And I feel like that is so helpful. And as a GM, it's very difficult to do. I think to pull off effectively because I don't I don't know what is going to be the the no but. What's the but? I didn't plan for one, right? You know, if I'm writing and scripting a really linear adventure, um, I need you to get through that door to get to the room where the battle's happening. If you can't pick the door, then what? You know, then what? So right. I, I like the scramble of this. I like the, the improvisation. And that feels like a big part of this game is kind of just, just diving into those. Let's, let's move the story forward, but let's, let's mm -hmm. focus on how can I make it more interesting, um, which is really fun. <laughs> yeah. I, anything that moves the story forward, like even failures, I, in D&D, &D, I don't, I don't always want them to be just the dead Ooh. end. Yeah. Um, sometimes they have to be a little bit like, you know, uh, yeah, you failed on unlocking that door. You have to find another way. Right. Uh, but I, I love the idea of like, oh, you attempted to jump a pit. Ah, you were so close. You didn't quite make it. Right. Uh, why don't you roll a saving throw to see if you can grab the edge? Or, uh, you know, one of your companions can roll a dexterity check to see if they can catch you in time, that type of thing. Yeah. I, I, I like those those kinds of features where just because the the die failed 
doesn't necessarily mean the hero failed because they're heroes. They're 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 yeah. out there, um, you know, just 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 all the time being these adventures. They're professionals, right? And this is right. and you'll hear me talk about this also. Is I hate critical failures. I don't think they should <laughs> exist. Uh, yeah. Rolling a one is meaningless in my games. It's just a one. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's so, so I, I, I just, anything that, that prevents that, like, oh, done. No, you failed. That's it. Save yeah, versus yeah. death. You're done. Isn't, isn't my play style. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I am just, of course, uh, checking our time. Um, <laughs> we got to push through our review. We got, we got guests waiting for oh. us. <laughs> oh man. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, just taking a, another look at this, right? This next page, I just want to focus on real quick because this is, oh, this is good stuff. Who I've never seen a page like this in an RPG. I don't think ever. No. Um, what is your job while playing the game? That's not usually how I think about it, but I love this this focus on if you were playing the game, what what should you be doing? You know, not just roll, you know, uh, rolling the dice so that you can do your extra attack once you hit fifth level or something, but very specifically like role play, explore, be cooperative. I love those big, bold call outs about what you should do as a player. Um, and similarly on the GM side, it's so be <laughs> give interesting and difficult choices. Like, yeah. Games are more exciting if you can do that. So, so go for it. Um, oh, this book is so good. <laughs> um, to, to take a couple minutes, uh, the game only has six classes, but they're all pretty unique, um, pretty exciting. The bards, uh, loyal chums. The gnomes are, are natural magic users, very druid-like. We got a couple kinds of roguey characters. Um, mm -hmm. There I is kind of the loyal chum. That's kind of yeah. my favorite one. If you if you wanted Samwise as a class, there you are. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, I mean, Samwise uh, is the hero. Is of the those hero movies, right? Um, <laughs> We've got rules here for a session zero that you should have filling out your relationships with other characters because you should have one. Your yep. personal quest, your backstory. I love this stuff. Ideals I and flaws. I do like they also that they also point out the TTRPG safety toolkit uh, as mm -hmm. something to consider whenever you're doing this as well. Yeah. Um, in the Very character good. sheet. Let's take a quick look at this character sheet. Yeah, look at those four stats on the left side, uh, if you can see them. Um, there is Vim, Vigor, Knack, and Know-How. Um, and at the start of the game, you have to give them modifiers. That's all. One of them gets a plus two, one gets a plus one, a plus zero, and a minus one. Which means on that D12, you're one of your main stats, you're always going to be subtracting one from it. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, unless you have a skill that boosts that up. Uh, and I love that. That means for some characters, success, unqualified success is not on the table, um, yeah. which I, I kind of like, honestly. You know, D&D, &D, you make an Arcana check. I don't have Arcana, but I rolled a 20. So cool. Mm, cool. Yeah. <laughs> this just says you, you kind of can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, oh gosh, there's so much. Uh, level 10 ability for the bard. The bard's cool. The bard's great. Uh, is narrative teleport. Bard's tale. Once per session oh, at the end of the scene, you can just transport yourself and the party to the next scene by just telling a story about how you got there. Like, And so we traveled across the scary forest through the... the what, what is it from Elf? <laughs> 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 through I, the I can't candy cane forest and then across the Brooklyn Tunnel. Whatever. <laughs> Um, and then you're there. You're there. Done. Hand wave it. I love it. Uh, it's a very cool story with a lot of really interesting ideas. Um, we're going to have to dig into this, I think, a second time, um, which we have already discussed, uh, mm -hmm. Justin and I. Um, yep. I, we're chatting with these. Uh, uh, we want to chat with these designers and get them in here and talk about what makes this game really interesting and exciting. Um, yeah. So this is excited. your preview for you to get excited. Yeah. But uh, is now the time for guests? Uh, I will say that you can go onto the website for the, the Land of Eam and you can get your copy of the beta rulebook um, to check out. It is, oh gosh, 180 pages, something like that. So there's lots of material for you to check out. All right. And then um, before we swap on over, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, the followers who joined us while we were chatting. I did not catch them all. Uh, so you all are awesome. Let's see here. There's the Red Sage and Iculus1030. Thank you so much for following. And uh, with that, let's uh, let's go to our first guest. All right. All right. Welcome, Aki. How are you doing? Welcome to Storytime on Elbow Hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> uh, My goodness. 
Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We're we're now here surrounded by purple. This is this is like we're in scene time now. <laughs> Sweetheart. Yeah. Um gosh, how let's see. You I I wanted you to be one of our our very first guests because you are such a prolific streamer. You do you do so much and I'm so excited about so many of your shows. Is um, prolific the right word? Is, That's not the word I was expecting. What word, which word? <laughs> I, I don't know. But prolific, this is very, very kind of you to say. Thank you. I, I, you're just out. You're on. I mean, um, of course, what we're going to talk a little bit about all games, no masters. But uh, I, I keep seeing you everywhere, right? <laughs> um, clear yeah. skies. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. let's get. <laughs> I can almost not say it out loud without laughing. Let's get wild amount. <laughs> yeah, let's get wild amount is a lot of fun. Um, That's so amazing. <laughs> we call ourselves the wild ones. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Um, yeah, I do. I do a little bit of stuff uh, here and there. Um, yeah. I've been very, very fortunate to get to work with a lot of really cool people in this space. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to talk to you kind of about, you know, uh, not just learn a story that you've gone through, but, you know, as as a, a streamer who tells uh, many, many stories, uh, how how do you get started? How do you how do you get not get started in the genre? But, you know, you sit down to a table. Um, what's your mindset like how when you get ready for one of these games? So I'm one of those people who Sometimes I have two different phases. I have two different okay. modes of like how I approach a game. I either come in knowing exactly who and what I want to play. And if somebody else has the same idea, then we kind of figure it out at the table and like kind of try and, and, and uh, uh, splice things so that we both get to have a little bit of, of both. Um, or I'm the type of person who waits until everybody else has figured out what they're going to do. And then I'm just like, okay, this is where I'm going to fit in. Um, I gotcha. <laughs> so like, I have two different, I have two different modes depending. Sometimes I'm feeling really inspired and just being like, I know exactly what I want to do. And, and mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to do. Um, and then other times I'm just sort of like, I'm going to be over here. And I'm just going to like, watch y'all figure out what you're mm -hmm. going to do. Um, so it can depend. Yeah. And especially because your shows seem to run the the gamut, right? You have the the shows where your characters are all, you know, I expect built out with a team in advance. You've talked about them. You're ready to go. And then, of course, all games, no masters. Uh, I always want to say all gods, no masters or something, but all games, no masters, which is on the like right now. Right. Yeah, we <laughs> it's um, just ready to go. <laughs> a little peek behind the curtain is sure. that. Um, in order to make sure that we are coming in as the best possible examples of what this game could mm -hmm. be, because mm -hmm. like all games and masters is at its core, an educational show. Yes. Like we are teaching people how to play games that don't require game masters. And that means we ourselves have to do a certain level of learning before we get started. Right. So we do have a meeting uh, together the day before where we kind of make sure everybody understands what's going on, like ourselves. That doesn't mean we don't feel comfortable answering, asking or, and answering questions during the actual mm. game, because we do quite often. Um, but it's more just like, is everybody feeling all right? Does anybody have any ideas? Sometimes we might pin down a couple of like character things like mm -hmm. early, uh, just to make sure that like when we get in on the Wednesday night, we hit the ground running and it's just two hours of solid having fun and, and, and doing, doing wild things. <laughs> Sure, sure. Which which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's in a game that is, you know, all all games, no masters, the GM list wonder that it is. Um, I'm used to playing a lot of fiasco. So I come from a similar space. Um, and without a GM, there is this this need to at some point just make big choices like just the story. It's it's headed this way. And you you know, no one is telling you, you must do this or you must do this. Right. So even with those boundaries, I expect you've got a lot of freedom uh, within a system like that. Yeah, it can be really funny sometimes because yeah. uh, every now and again, we'll kind of ask ourselves like as a group and be like, is it okay? Can I do that? And we'll just kind of turn to each other and go like, there is nobody to tell you you can't. It's just like, <laughs> there is no one here who's going to be like, nah, you can't do that, brah. Like, mm -hmm. of course, we we have like, you know, we use the same safety tools and systems that are like, of course. you know, that guide, hopefully, you know, all tables at this point. If you're not using safety tools at your table um but like 
yeah. for the most part, it's just sort of like we we've we've tried to build this table on the idea that like we we're not going to purposely do anything that's going to deeply upset or like fuck up things for other people. Yeah. I apologize if I'm not right. allowed to use that word, but you know, it's a good time to use it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, um, and, and the interesting thing is that when I was putting this table together, like mm -hmm. uh, I, I pulled this table together first because there was uh, one of my, one of my players uh, was somebody that I, I play with in a home game, uh, but our characters in that game don't get along. So we don't act like we as friends do not get to interact with each other at that table very much. And, you know, that bummed me out. It was like, I, I'm finally getting a chance to play with you, but I don't actually get to play with you. So I was oh, like, wow. how can I play mm -hmm. with you more? And I was like, well, I have this idea for this thing. Do you want to come do this thing with me? <laughs> um, and, and that's kind of how the show became what it is. That is so perfect. Um, well, without, I, I'm curious, um, do you decide which, which games you're going to be running in each session? Do, is it your master plan? <laughs> so what, uh, what we did is um, we each had the opportunity to pick a game that we absolutely had to, like, like we personally were just really, really invested in the idea of playing. Mm -hmm. And then we also chose an alternate in the event that we would have some time towards the end of the season to like pull in another system and play. Um, we kind of try to keep the games between one to two sessions for each of them. Some of them okay. play shorter than others. Like that's kind of the nature of GM with systems. Some can become yeah. campaigns. Some are kind of only meant to be played as one or two shots. Um, and so we kind of like took the games that we had chosen and we're like, which of these games feel like games that are going to take a little bit longer than others. Uh, and then sort of broke it down that way. Like now mm -hmm. that we are, uh, imminently going to be beginning our second season though i cannot say exactly when that's happening we are in the process sure. of choosing our next batch of games right mm -hmm. now um, so. oh well what uh, what is hmm, favorites might be tough but what's one of those systems that you played last season that you really enjoyed that you'd love to like share with others oh man we had so <laughs> much fun playing they came to play ball like we finished, we did only one shot of that. And we finished that game, each and every one of us being like, we cannot wait to play that again. <laughs> like that was just so much fun. It was just like this really, like it was just a very pristine system. And we had, we mm -hmm. actually had the, the, the great fortune of in our meeting the day before of actually having the creator in our meeting with us to kind of, you know, break down the system for us. A little oh, wow. bit. And like, it was really cool. <laughs> she was so excited that we were playing the game. We were so excited that we were playing the game. And when we finished the game, we're like, man, we we're excited to play more of that at some point. Um, and then Amazing. we also had an absolute blast with dialect, like, uh, everybody mm -hmm. um, who plays that, uh, who play, who plays in my group are like, you know, writers or people who love to read or like, you know, actors, like we've kind of built our entire, like our, we're all very much, we love words and we love language. Yeah. Um, uh, the, one of my, my other players, um, Randy, uh, he and I both lived in Japan together at the same time. It's how we know each other. Uh, we both have a deep love language, we're both actors. Um, so that was, that was a, a really phenomenal game as well. <laughs> That's good. Well, I'm excited to see which games you pick for next time as well. Um, I know that, of course, you you do have to get going soon because you are on New Pantheon in an hour from now. Yeah. Everybody, I'm going to help you build an encounter. <laughs> I'm not going to run away before we okay, have the okay. chance to do that. I will be here for that. Um, Fair enough. But but I want to make sure we get a, a story moment from you, right? It's it's story time. Um, sure. Is there? Is there a moment in one of your games that you feel that you just remember really well that was like a a, a cool bit that you would love to tell us about? <laughs> Man, so many games, so many cool stories. Yeah, um, it's what prolific. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually very recently had the opportunity to play um, Alice is Missing with the people oh, yeah. over at Good Time Society, and we're talking like a ridiculous cast. It was. Uh, B. Dave Walters, Mark Muir, Gina DeVivo, mm. and myself, which is just like, yeah. uh, along with the actual creator Impressive. of the game, Spencer <laughs> Stark, who is also just a delightful human being. And it's my first time playing, never played <laughs> Alice is Missing before. It's a phenomenal game. I've heard so many yeah. good things about it. And I just remember this energy through that entire game that just there's something about the intensity of the play and the way that like it really taps it, especially as a millennial who grew up yeah. kind of start, who started with text RP, like, like really like started with that text RP to kind of 
dive back into that sort of mode of communication and even even being able to see everybody's face like the complete silence and like only being able to like see the facial reactions as we're all like scrambling to solve this mystery together Mm -hmm. and like just some really really beautiful story moments um i remember there was this like sort of intense uh moment that that really uh took all of the table together kind of agreeing like without saying anything to each other to sort of like really take care of each other in a way that Uh like that like could have been incredibly like fragile and emotional and like off-putting um but everybody like everybody just kind of gelled around that moment so nicely and Mm -hmm. yeah I, i don't think i've ever played i've never had an experience like that at a table before it was it was kind of magical I, I can't imagine this. This game looks incredible. I backed it and got my copy and started reading through it, and immediately was like, I, I I've got to play this with you know this group of people that I trust completely, you know, and have this this experience. Um, right? You are you're mostly communicating over over your phones. You're just texting back and forth, right? And I know yeah. that the game comes with with cards and clues and things like that as well. But uh, what would um, did you have the opportunity then to just start? I mean, you can kind of decide how it's going to go, right? Kind of inject some of your story into or your theory, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually kind of what happened with this moment. It's that mm-hmm. um, I, I I drew a card and like had to figure out how to justify that card and how I kind of played that into the story Uh and it meant kind of leaping off a cliff and and for a little bit of context and I do kind of want to put a bit of a content warning up here that this is slightly sensitive and so if uh, it it does deal with like um, screwed up power dynamics and all that stuff so if that kind of thing is like squeaky for you I'm just going to warn you right now that it is slightly sensitive uh but uh my 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 student the 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 character I was playing uh was engaging in uh, in this case just a text-based relationship with a teacher um Mm -hmm. and the uh the the revelation of that was something that had to be handled super delicately because you know of the content uh but also was something that like was not something I'd ever anticipated being part of the story, but because of the card I drew, I had to be like, okay, how do I justify this? How do I make this make sense within the realm of the story that we've already recreated? Mm -hmm. And one of the other characters had talked about how Alice had punched this teacher out over something. It was a rumor that had been going around. And so I decided that the reason that she did that was not because of something that happened between her and that teacher, it would be because of something that happened between me and that teacher. Um, And so like, yeah, that was, that was, that was a moment that like, was very delicate to navigate in the game. Yeah. It was, was, uh, like I said, incredible to watch everybody kind of go, okay, we got it. All right. Here's how mm-hmm. we're going to play this kind of without ever like missing a beat. It was pretty incredible. That's amazing. That really, really is. Wow. Um, incredible. I mean, just, just having that team where you can have that kind of, you know, that story. Uh, wow. I, <laughs> that is, that is amazing. And, you know, for me, a little intimidating. I'm very impressed. <laughs> like I said, it was one of those things where I was just sort of like, okay, I, I think I know how I need to do this. Mm-hmm. I have to be very careful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So wow. Yeah, it's, it's a game that, and it's a game that challenges you in that way. It's just sort of like, it deals with really difficult subject matter and uh, requires like a really heightened level of sensitivity to that material. And like, yeah. you have to be, you have to be comfortable with a certain level of vulnerability Um And in this case, like, I'd never had the opportunity to play with Mark before. Like, this was my first time even meeting him. Um, Like, wow. Wow. (laughs) So, like, I I think it just, it speaks to the consummate professionalism of the table. Like, like everybody, everybody was just, I I mean, I'd give my left arm to play with them all again. They were, it was just a really, really great table. Amazing. Um, That's fantastic. Wow. Well, that's amazing. I I thank you for for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, Gosh. Um. Let's say let's say I wanted to um, find one of your your many many shows that you're doing right now. How many are you doing at the moment? Like, you know, ish at the moment. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing seven shows oh, and yeah. 
uh, two of them are on hiatus at the moment. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but they'll be they'll be back. That's amazing. Yeah, they'll be back. Yeah. Well, I hope that you get to have more amazing moments. I'm excited for to see some of these stories for myself, for sure. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see what comes up next on New Pantheon, actually. I'm excited, too. <laughs> As well, I, I, have, I have no idea what torment Stephen has prepared for us poor teenagers for this next episode. <laughs> right. Well, at least you have your, your um, deific powers to back you up. Right. Yes. Right. I, <laughs> I am. I am uh, empowered by truth, justice, and harmony, and therefore, I have. I have a. I, I'm all good. My has got my back. Oh my gosh! Well, if if your character ever wants to hang out with a, a champion of art and beauty, you just let me know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I feel I'll... like that would be a, a, a good combo. <laughs> my my paladin of art is is fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was listening to your Pathfinder conversation, and man, yeah. I miss playing Tui. It was a lot of fun. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I am with you. Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, we'll thank get back you. to you. You're going to be back in a little bit as we you start building an adventure together. Um, but we're going to swap back over pretty quickly and let uh, Justin and Teos have a chance to chat. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. All right, well, that was uh, Aki and Rich, and uh, I'm back uh i did i did have to run and 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 hit the head while while it was not my turn and so i'm a little out of breath uh but i wanted to go ahead and introduce our next guest this is teos uh also known as alpha stream and uh i've known teos for too long now i knew you were gonna years. say too long i knew that yeah. was coming yeah, over 10 years. Uh, he has been on every iteration of podcast and show I have done. Uh, we met through the Living Forgotten Realms campaign. So that was an organized campaign for fourth edition in the Forgotten Realms. It's a ton of fun. Uh, we have a great crew here in the Portland area who really enjoyed it. Uh, since then, we've also participated in... Um, uh, the the Dark Sun uh, ages, blah, 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 ages Ashes of Athos. Ashes of Athos. Why is my brain? That's awesome. Uh, Ashes. Uh, uh, yeah, Athos is, is quickly became one of my favorite settings after uh, talking with Teos and his passion about it. Uh, and then we we all made the journey to D and D Next Fifth Edition together. Uh, after and uh, what was the last game we played was uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Oh yeah, right? Tomb of Annihilation. That was a ton of fun. Some play uh, tests. Yeah. Oh man, so much. And uh, Teos, he uh, he has this amazing collection of uh, you know uh, Dungeon Forge uh, tiles and and all this great terrain stuff. But the thing that 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 I always enjoy whenever he he talks about on Twitter is miniatures. Uh, Teos uh, is on a podcast called uh, Misdirected Mast Mark. Mastering Dungeons on the Misdirected Mark Network. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know if that's a, a a repeating segment there yet, but on his site, alphastream.com, you can go and see all his reviews on uh, minis and uh, a lot of great comparisons between the old Wizards of the Coast minis and the new WizKids minis. And that's specifically what I brought you on to talk about. So welcome to the show. Uh, it's nice seeing you. Um, I'm hoping we all get our shot soon and we can game at a real table soon, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait for that. Thanks for having me on, Justin and Rich. Really appreciate it. I've enjoyed the show so far. Good to see you on the Saving Throw Network. Good network. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So I guess minis, right? Um, WizKids took over doing the D&D minis for 5th edition. They had previously been doing them for Paizo. Um, and because they, they've, they've just been a mini producing game, like I used to play he uh, Hero Clicks and those other games, like they have the ability to produce minis more inexpensively than Wizards of the Coast probably ever could. Um, so they've kind of taken it over and they've, they've created some spectacular minis and they've created some stinkers. <laughs> uh, do you, do you, do you have, yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's get into it. So, you get into it? yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I want to show, I want to show, first off, I want to show two two types of minis. I have some minis over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is important because these two minis uh, are my generic minis. Um, every DM has them. These are the generic minis that you put down on your D&D &D table or Pathfinder table. They represent the bad guys. Uh, and I always use uh, <laughs> yeah. my uh, Stormtroopers and uh, Sad oh, yeah. People. 
<laughs> Tuscan Raiders, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and having played in your campaigns, I've I've seen those hit the table countless times. I think Mike Shea has a crossbow dude. You know, there, there's there's all kinds of things like that. I swear to not do that. So even though I do have some favorites, I mean, who doesn't love a good uh, pig farmer, right? Like oh, yeah. his little pig that he's carrying under his arm. I mean, that's that's an old standby. But I always try to shake it up. And so I have this elaborate system, which I've documented on my blog, by which I make sure that I can get to the mini that I want for the session with as little prep as possible and then put them back with as little work as possible because I love those minis, right? I love mm -hmm. to just, I mean, you know, you've got some just amazing, amazing minis. Oh yeah. That are just like that's Zariel from the Avernus set, which is an incredible one. And just that diversity that they've given us of minis across the ages is just, you know, it's a gift, right? Like oh, this yeah. bit from the old DDM set. I mean, just unbelievable. I, I live for those kinds of miniatures. It, it, it excites me. And so I always like picking, uh, you know, the exact mini when I can or something that, that at least excites people when it hits the table. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, so in, in, I, I'm, I'm, I don't just get the, the, oh yeah, the flump. Yeah. I don't just get the D and D minis. Occasionally I pick up the Paizo ones. Cause I do think some of their sculpts are a lot better. Like for instance, I, I have the carrion crawler here from Paizo. That's I think that's one. one of the best carrion crawler minis out there. Yeah. Um, there's some really good uh, pathfinder ones that, that I've, that I've picked up over the years uh, or even like, you know, old star Wars minis. Like, I don't know how oh, yeah. crazy it is to, yeah. Right. So the Acklay is just fantastic with the with the pose it has. You know, it really it scares people when you throw a, a, a different mini like that down that they've never even seen before, or they might recognize it from Star Wars, but but it, <laughs> it really shocks them and wakes them up. Uh McFarlane has the, the various dragons. This is great for Dark Sun, looks like the dragon of Tyr, but just super evocative, right? So you can always pick up some weird, more, you know, atypical minis to to shake it up. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any any minis of 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 like the old DDM or the old Dungeons and Dragons ones versus a a, a whiz kids that uh, that particularly stand out to you? So I have two that I always kind of go to uh, because in general, like the DDM minis were hefty, mm -hmm. uh, which is maybe why they couldn't turn much of a profit on it. Uh, but and so when you see the the um, the whiz kids ones, they tend to be leaner on plastic. And sometimes that's really disappointing. So this is the Balor Demon, which this is the old DDM, the the, the from from the D and D company itself. Just incredible, right? Like just the thickness of the whip mm -hmm. of the body. I mean, this is just a, it's it's hefty. Uh, and then you have the the same. This is the new version, and it's not bad. I mean, it's cool, but but it just one of them really scares you when you plunk it on the table, and the other is just kind of neat. Right. Yeah. And possibly the worst example of this, be partly because it's a miniature that I love so much, is the uh, Yuan Ti Anathema from the old set is this swirling mass of snakes that curl into this head and these arms. And then there's this new sad version that is a sloppy paint job and this super thin arms. And I don't know what it's doing like like and it's the same base. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and one of them was cheaper to make <laughs> guess <Right>. which one <laughs> and and i want them to be profitable but but it's it's sort of like what's happening and you talked about tiamat right and here's the old ddm aspect of tiamat and this yes. was an aspect and this was a kind of neat thing they do which is hey it's just tiamat sending her projection into your world so that's why it looks a little you know smaller and then they you know whiz kid said well this is tiamat and we're all like no no it's not no. it's it's cool it looks pretty but, um, you know, I still feel like I'm in the D&D cartoon. And I guess they heard us because they're like, well, how about if I give you one so big, you possibly can't use it. Um, <laughs> and I'm a little bit like, you know, not only is it four hundred dollars, sorry, three ninety nine, three ninety nine. <laughs> but I mean, it's so big that you're just like, I can't store all the dragons you're giving me and, and selling me and, 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 and all the terrain and, and just the castles. And, and so, you know, I wonder if we've gotten to that point where they've suddenly said, well, you know, we will give you the heftiness, but it's going to be an incredible price and you won't be able to own all of them. Right. It's, it's just, you can't even store them or place them on some shelf because it'll just fill everything up. Yeah. I, um, 
I, I do have to say like some of the minis uh, that they've done and I and I didn't grab it. Um, I was talking about it earlier, but I like for for oh that one's so good, right? Uh, you know, in in for instance, like the troll. Um, I love the the Whiz Kids mm-hmm. troll mini. I like that it's wiry, that it's thin, that it's kind of creepy, versus the the old Dungeons and Dragons one, which which was also a really cool mini. It was definitely bulkier, but it didn't feel like the kind of troll that I that I remember. Sure, sure, yeah. It's more. It's a more classic look now, right? Yeah. Um, another really beautiful example of that is the different versions we've seen of the uh, purple worm. So this is the mm-hmm. old DDM purple worm, which is yeah. really fantastic, right? Lovely mm-hmm. sculpt. And this is something that DDMs always did. Just a heftiness to it. It feels strong, beautiful, really cool, just awe-inspiring. Uh, and then WizKids created this one for one of their prepackaged sets. And it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You yeah. Know? And then they said, all right, well, we'll charge you money for it at, at a premium price. And now we have the new version is is super awesome, right? I mean, it's superb, but you've got to shell out that cash to get the really nice version. Um, and I and I did obviously I couldn't <laughs> say no to it because it, yeah. it, it's just too cool. Does it but, pass the mini test? Yeah, I mean, it is. Yes, you can. You know, the test is always can you put you know a miniature inside of the maw, uh, which is very important <laughs> to always be able to do because yeah. as Justin knows from being in my campaigns, I delight in swallowing characters uh, you know it's it, unapologetically i can't wait to swallow something uh, yeah. or at least grapple it with the jaw and so that's just really cool i love that yeah, yeah I, I i you know and you, you mentioned the premium miniatures i love the premium miniatures from WizKids. i think they do an amazing job i think they're i want to say they're better i i than the uh, ddm kind of special ones right yeah. like sure icing death was fine like i liked icing death it was a favorite of my dragons the uh the giant red dragon is gorgeous it's a collector's item right but for the most part it's like you know it, you, you don't you didn't get many many krakens right i mean this <laughs> is this is one. my like favorite big mini from from whiz kids it's just you know so so much detail and the waves are amazing and i you know yeah. and honestly i love that they're going to the clear bases i think that's smart yeah. um i like yeah. those a lot yeah i like that or how they did the gelatinous cube where they have the uh, removable insert, right? And so you can put your <laughs> yeah, miniature inside like of it. We both grabbed it. Yeah, um, I went ahead it. and I painted mine. So like, oh, nice. I yeah, painted yeah. skeletons in there and everything. And the old one actually did that too. A lot of people didn't know the old one opens up as well. But uh, oh. but but it's it's nice how they added that extra layer around uh, the, the plastic so you can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, super cool. I mean, it, the... Uh, the Goblin, uh, I think it's called Goblin Hucker. Yeah, this is from uh, Tyranny of Dragons. So Ooh, it yeah. actually has little goblins that the ogre flings at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a just amazing piece of work there. Um, and I mean, the spe- premium... speaking of the ogre, I just straight up, I like this ogre so much yeah, better. Great ogre. Right? It's so much better than the old ogres. This this uh it's this is from the uh, Theros the Polukranos World Eater but it, you know it's a Hydra for our, most of us just fantastic sculpt so there have been some really really beautiful minis uh, that that I I love going to uh, the Flail Snail was in a recent set oh, that's right the Flail Snail so and good. it has this goo like it's the slime coming off of it at the bottom and the scintillating shell I mean really some great work so. Uh, you know, there's there are times when I really feel uh, let down by their minis, but there are other times that are great. Like they had this Ravnica collector's set. The detail on some of these, uh, you know, and the different color plastics. Like it used to be that mm-hmm. they, they could only do so much with a mini, and, and now they do a lot more. Um, so it, it's a it's a mix, right? Sometimes you're, you're let down by a mini, and you think, come on, they could have just looked at the old one and, and given me that. Uh, but other times there's an improvement and an evolution. Like there's this, uh, Avernus had this, uh, what's it called? The uh, Narzagon and Nightmare set. And so that's pretty neat already. It's like flaming, but oh wait, there's more. You can take it all apart and you can put it back into being a horse, which is totally absurd. So so this piece goes in somehow and it becomes the horse. Oh, nice. Uh, and then the the person reassembles into the mounted version 
Oh, wow. So you, you have this complete ability with this one mini to, to kind of ride it or not. And I don't know who thought that up. I'm not sure we super needed it, but it's amazing and awesome. And, and in your encounter, you have to think how to, you let them dismount it and then attack separately. But yeah, I, you beautiful know, options. And that's that's something like, uh, you know, th th that's always and I didn't realize I, they made that one, but that's always the mini I'm looking for. Right. I like playing mounted characters on occasion and I want to be able to put my mini on the mount. And I know there's there's some of them you can get like where you can put the mini down, but the mount looks yeah. weird or yeah. all that. But but th that was that's such a graceful solution. Yeah, that little piece that plugs in is, is what really makes the difference and just evens it out. That's so I also have to talk about some of the other companies like Dwarven Forge makes some miniatures. So this oh, yeah. is from their uh, Caverns Deep series. Uh, this uh, I forget it's a, some sort of forest spirit, but it is just I mean the details uh, on this creature are something else right and so you can you know bring in their terrain and you have things like their trees that you drop mm -hmm. down and just i mean what a story you can build off of pieces like that right just right. unbelievable yeah i mean speaking of, of other companies i like digging into a lot of other companies too so like this troll which is going to show up weird because of my green screen uh but this troll is from uh warhammer fantasy and i just you know i just painted it right is that spitting acid that's great it's yeah it's it's throwing up and it's it has like fish bones and stuff in it this is a cool lich thin lich nice nice fire behind Love and that. when they they didn't have very good warforged i i uh i picked up one of these guys from warhammer uh 40k oh nice painted that to be a warforge yeah oh nice this pirate you know i thought of you because pirates uh yeah. is one of my favorites like it just looks so it's great that's in the paizo line uh yeah, and he's showing off like just the fancy. He's he has like the best butt out of most minis, uh, and then this is just right out of Game of Thrones. Just such a good mm -hmm. look from the pies line. Oh man, so good! Oh, gotta love it. <laughs> you see this uh, this shadow? You can put a miniature on it. Oh wow! Like there's some really neat things. So yeah, it's it's you know. Oh, and one of my favorites of all time is the collar and darkness. Oh yeah, that put was a little so base good. on it, which is a fun mm -hmm. thing you can do. But uh, it's like just this mass of spirits that are, you know, just protesting their being in this world, and that's the kind of thing you drop this down, and, and players have no idea what that creature does, but they know it's not going to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I remember that being one of my favorite minis from the D and D uh, series of minis was was that weird spirity thing. Um, all right, well we're getting ready to go and build an adventure. Uh, but before we do that, let's uh, let's talk about a little bit where we can find your stuff on the internet. Awesome. Uh, you can find me at alphastream.org. Uh, if you go to misdirectedmark.com, you can find our podcast, Mastering Dungeons, uh, where we rip off whatever you've talked about on the previous show <laughs> and we repackage it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we do our own things, but... But sometimes there's some similarities. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and I may have taken some ideas from your character build discussions, but uh, and I've got something really cool coming up. I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter with my son because my teenage son and I wrote an adventure together. It was super fun. And so I'm finding art and I just got some maps in. I know, right? And uh, we're so excited because we're seeing art come in. Uh, and I now really appreciate all the people who have launched a Kickstarter because, geez, why do we do this again? Because, wow, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> but, and yeah, and so procuring art, boy, there's a thing I didn't want to do as a pastime. But when you see great art come in, like I'm looking at these maps of this clock tower and oh yeah. So that's exciting. I'm getting ready for that. Uh, and then I've got a couple of secret projects that are going on. So I'm I'm excited for this year. This is gonna be a good year. And it, what, so uh, what about those secret projects? Can yeah, they're the... Yeah, oh, 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 we're having audio trouble, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and hop on over and we'll start trying to uh, see what kind of adventure we can do. All right. We all should be live now. We're checking this out. And uh, of course, I don't have my notion up, but I will fix that oh. here in just a second. <laughs> wow. Uh, I know. Wow. Right? Um, so what we do, this is this is kind of our thing, is uh, the last portion of our show, the, of, of, of Owlbear Soup, is with the help of the audience, with the help of our guests, uh, we are going to build like a short one-shot style adventure, or uh, we'll stick with an adventure this week. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's, let's kind of start this out. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big D&D &D nerd. I think D&D &D is a great 
idea for setting an adventure, uh, starting an adventure. Uh, however, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think, well, let's think about setting. Are we thinking fantasy? Do we want to do cyberpunk? Do we want to do space? Do we want to do anthropomorphic city <laughs> filled with animals? Um, what do you guys think? Wow. Wow, folks. <laughs> so many options. Yeah, it's true. Um, Starting is the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, and I, I feel like, um, you know, honestly, after listening to both of these these bits, I feel like uh, I feel like Aki may have uh, this breadth of themes ready to go. And Teos is, of course, looking at a bunch of villains. <laughs> I feel like there's a combo here. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the idea of doing um, something that is based on like uh, an all villains or all like. Um, a little bit like you know those that uh, what's the Disney show called Descendants, where it's like all of the kids of like um, of like Disney villains, Ooh. but like Ooh. basically basically like the offspring of like <laughs> major villains, like you know what if Tiamat had a kid or you know Vecna had a child, like just these just this ragtag group of kids <laughs> of like the the most prolific it's like Strahd before he became like this undead vampire, you mm -hmm. know, just, like had a couple of kids and like like his great 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 grandchild is suddenly just like ah oh, fucking Strahd now, like <laughs> you know, it. it's it's like kind of that deal, it's like the uh, the yeah, because I do actually do quite a bit of like you know children of. Like I've done a couple of, of shows that are like that. And it's actually a lot of fun to play play with that stuff. So sort of like mm -hmm. the expectations of the people you descended from uh, and then you as an actual person. <laughs> this Sons is, of this, villainy. I, this is perfect. So um, let's see here. So here's the request that we have gotten uh, from the chat as well is uh, <laughs> steampunk animals. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to be doing, they're all the children of villains. The children of villains with uh, steampunk animals in a steampunk <laughs> animal type of setting a uh, flail okay, okay. was requested uh that we bring it in in some way um so uh, wow let me all right notes real quick if they like steampunk animals they're gonna love the uh, adventure that my son and i wrote Ooh. oh good good <laughs> Are, are oh my these, gosh. Are these animals like they're familiars or are they like are they are they the actual heroes of this world that the villains inhabit? Well, right. Play a steampunk uh, animal. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I, hmm. so here's my idea, real real quick. So uh we do have the 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 adventuring society. Uh um or society of adventures, sorry, or one of those, my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Exploration uh, Society, yeah. Exploration <laughs> Society, thank you. So we do have the Exploration Society as a starting place, right? We could start there. That works for, for everyone here. Uh, and we are uh, the Albert Soup, so let's have Chef Albert D send folks on the... Uh, this will be our quest giver. Okay, yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, maybe maybe around the Exploration Society hub, we have some anthropomorphic. Yeah, <laughs> close enough. Uh, this is why we like folks. Yeah, I don't know. This is why you guys let me type because I can't spell. Um, <laughs> so we have anth anthropomorphic folks, uh, and they they are adventurers. So, uh, so Chef Albert D, what does Chef Albert D want our adventurers to go do? So they're going to go to a steampunk world. Uh, they need to go to a okay. steampunk world uh, right. through the portal portal um, on the oh, this is exciting floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have our our heroes, these these anthropomorphic descendants of villains. So. Mm -hmm. So Strahd, but a fox, but also, <laughs> and then going through a portal to Steampunk Town. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe none of them realize that they've been turned into animals. Oh yeah, maybe maybe, maybe that the, happens. Maybe the portal turns them into animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe oh, they don't good. start off that way, but when yeah. they go through this portal, they become whatever it is the world demands of them to be. It's like. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Um, because immediately Strahd, your Strahd's characters. Strahd's kid is pissed off. Is like what? Yeah. 
Great. But also now has like a climb speed. (laughs) What if I what if they're instead like a lizard, like a Komodo dragon instead? They're just like (laughs) that's amazing. (laughs) Tiamat as a Komodo dragon. Oh. I, I love the idea of having an adventure where people get cool powers that, that they'll only have maybe for this one adventure, but it just changes their play style a little bit. Yeah. So that sounds fantastic. <laughs> We'd have a whole table set up, you know, it could be roll a D12 and, and now you are, or of course, inspired by, <laughs> you know, lizard folk for Tiamat or something, you know, it could be all over the yeah. place. Okay, so we've we brought them to steampunk town um <laughs> what are they well, what, what are they, they here what, for why, why'd, why'd they come through the portal out? yeah why'd they go there why what's the mission uh oh they have to retrieve highly valuable and sought after spice or cooking ingredient that's also difficult to obtain someone's speaking our language <laughs> yep uh the chef chef wants you uh let's let's do a spice the chef wants you <laughs> You to get a spice from Steampunk Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe what if that's the the surprise? Like you go through the portal. Uh-huh. Well, there's two surprises. One is that you're going to become, you know, steampunk. An <laughs> and then the other part is that uh, that you stumble upon this plot that is about to be sprung by all these villains. Mm. Oh. So maybe you just think you're going for spices, but there's so much more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you go in for spices, but then uh, then the aspects of your villain parents, uh, villain <laughs> parents in this town are plotting something. Oh. Okay. This is good because it doesn't need to be spice related, but we we immediately realize that those are our. <laughs> our ancestors i've got a tentacle now sorry um <laughs> oh, i've got an idea yeah yeah what if the spice is actually what's powering the steampunkness oh so you can only get it by resolving the problem Ooh. oh oh yeah so the, so the steampunkness is actually part of the problem because there's always that table that would say like yeah sorry about your steampunk problem we got the spice see you later right uh, and what if the people spice. What if the people that use uh so what oh ooh, what if the, the the people who run the city and use the spice to help keep things running are actually plotting with the villains? So this is like a whole big conspiracy or like corruption yes. plot. Yes. Uh, we already got the spice must flow. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh wow. So our first scene. We got a lot of stuff going on here. So let's see. So scene one, uh, they meet uh, Chef Alberti. Who's down in, in the corner, by the way. Is it that corner? Is it that corner? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, who runs Spice Town? Uh, they, they meet with self, Chef Alberti in the kitchen. He sends them to the portal. Uh-huh. Uh, and then scene two, right? Scene one is the introduction. We're meeting our patron. Uh, patrons are kind of a nice tool to use whenever you're writing one shots. Uh, this is the person who the, the adventure cinder honor, um, also like a Johnson in steampunk, um, and that type of stuff. I'm so sorry. I'm just realizing this is basically like suicide squad goes shopping. I mean, <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, that's goes perfect. Goes grocery shopping. Suicide mm-hmm. squad mm-hmm. goes grocery shopping. That's what this is. <laughs> Yep. Uh, <laughs> I can't spell it. Go okay. okay, so scene two. They arrive in Steampunk Town. Okay. So now you get to figure uh, out what kind you are, what, what creature. Yeah. So uh what so we want to know what uh what kinds uh what kinds of creatures are the characters? Uh yeah, creatures. Just so as you know, I'm looking at the stream and the notes that you're making are not showing up because I think you got to scroll down. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Time to scroll. <laughs> Time to scroll. <laughs> got to remember those things. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I'm seeing a good note in the chat, too, that I'm holding on to for a second. So. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All Keep right. What kinds um, of creatures are the PCs? Yeah. So, and then, you know, we have things like fox, uh, turtle. Uh, turtle. 
I love yeah. turtles. They're my the favorite. turtle, yeah, right. Uh, the turtle walks in and is like, "I'm still just a turtle." Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the tabaxi also goes through the same issue. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah cat is always a good one. <laughs> the, the, the the kitsune tries to change their uh, uh, form, but they just change to the same form. They just become a fox again with fewer yeah. tails. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A kitsune becomes an actual fox with fewer tails. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my the gosh. Kobold, the kobold at this point has the best chance of becoming an actual dragon when they come out on the right. other side. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> just, a, just, just a tiny oh. little dragon, a foot tall. <laughs> we, we all know the chupacabra animal in our backyard. <laughs> um. Yeah, there was there was a mention in the chat of I mean, goat um, is not a bad one. Speaking of cow, no, not at all. <laughs> um, about a sheepdog or German shepherd as the investigator. Like, I, as they get here, they're going to need someone. They're going to need a contact that's they like, are. "Welcome to Steampunk Town. Are you are you looking for something? Can I help you?" Yeah. Or or maybe they are the link to the plot, of course. But um, I like that they have to meet a contact pretty quick. Yeah, no, I like that. Like they stumble upon a uh, a dog in a trench coat. Mm -hmm. usual, uh, usual. With, who <laughs> is investigating fedora <laughs> right have a fedora yep. yeah right who's investigating something mcgruff uh, and fedora a growth mcgruff <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i thought he said he was investigating a growth um, <laughs> who isn't ever <laughs> see the older uh, we get i mean it's just <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll we'll start with this so this will be our uh next 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 step giver right because we right. we're in this strange world uh and so uh mcgruff we'll call him mcgruff Ooh. for now mm -hmm. we all we also have this cool opportunity here right strange things have happened our characters have just changed dramatically do we want to just give them the next step or is it time for like action immediately just new world i don't know what's happening now it's chaos <laughs> like I, I feel as though they have the opportunity when they first go through that portal to ruffle a few feathers perhaps they're they meet this contact because uh mcgruff saves them from a potentially dire circumstance Wherein mm -hmm. they do not understand the world and therefore step in it like pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. Uh, <laughs> so literal literal, literal feathers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a gang of chickens. Uh, so so uh, here we go. The players uh, come through the portal and appear in the midst of a gang of chickens. Oh uh, gosh. I'm envisioning one of those scenes where you're outside like the, the big biker bar and someone like knocks over one motorcycle and they yeah. all fall down. It's like <laughs> uh, a gang, gang of chickens who are looking at them as the portal did something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what did the portal do to their something? I'm imagining something akin to Wizard of Oz, where the house lands on the good on the witch. Oh, there's actually a, yeah. a, a through the portal, and the PCs realize uh, that there is a bunch of chicken feathers in the air. There's a oh, portal. No. Maybe <laughs> exploded a chicken. <laughs> Oh, uh, broke their eggs which were all in one basket ooh, oh. that's a really good <laughs> note from chat oh, i love it a lot. That, right. that one, the realize that's a that win. one of them wow yeah yeah they realize that uh they, they they step through the portal uh who are mad at one of the pcs who stepped out of the portal portal and <laughs> into a basket Filled with eggs. I love it. So much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the idea of one of the chickens saying, I told you not to put them all in that one basket. <laughs> That's the entire box text for the scene. That's the box text. <laughs> right, yeah. I, 
Oh my gosh, that sounds great. Oh, this is this is a good start. Like getting us in the scene. Um, definitely have to get saved by McGruff, whether you know the heroes defeat the chickens or not. Right, McGruff coming in and being like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Come, come with me if you want to live." Um, <laughs> sort of. Uh, I got to tell you what's going on here. Maybe. <laughs> you know, he has to call them kids, no matter how old they are. Oh yeah, kids. <laughs> Listen, son. <laughs> And, and yeah, these these teenage, well, I was going to say teenage villains, but that's that's unfair to put on them, I think. Teenage descendants like of villains. <laughs> potential, potential villains. Great, potential great. Villains. They've, got the, they've got the seeds of greatness in them. Yeah, yeah. yes. Um, but they're, they're definitely not going to like being called kids by McGruff, definitely. So that's a good rivalry moment. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how wise do we think McGruff is to like the fact that something like I, I mm. this is obvious contact like how 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 knowledgeable do we want him to be about what's actually going on like is he a really like well-informed contact or is he somebody who's actually kind of um uh a little bit more like discombobulated and maybe doesn't maybe pretends to know more than he does like what kind of how reliable mm -hmm. of a narrator is he I, I, oh, yeah, man. that's perfect. I, th I think he, I think yeah, a little bit of column A and a whole lot of column B, right? So <laughs> uh, he. So let's talk about McGruff for a second. All right. So uh, McGruff um, <laughs> under, is is able to piece together rather quickly the PC's situation, uh, but he. Uh, often overlooks plainly obvious things, right? Um, and that leads to, which leads to strange happenings, uh, strange misunderstandings. What if like there's recently been a change? I mean, it depends on how direct we want to be, but there could have been recently a change in this area where there used to be a leader of the town and now it's all these kids. And right. maybe they were in charge of the chickens. Oh, yeah. We're... To, to watch the portal. Right. The kids... Maybe McCruff also knows that the oh. spice is no longer, that all the spice has been bought up. I don't know. He, that could be the info he gives. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. McGruff, I like that. I like Scott that he's the intro to level one. But level two is villains, right? It's maybe he doesn't put that together. <laughs> right. Uh, knows the spice the PCs are looking for and knows uh, that it is a uh, highly controlled guarded, substance. <laughs> highly controlled. Oh, wow. Though I'm sure there's pending legislation. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Does Chef Alberti know all this stuff? I mean, that's a good question. He's just sent a bunch of kids out <laughs> to this world. I, to you get know, like... how passionate is <laughs> Chef uh, Albert D about um, about his craft <laughs> is the actual question, and does he care? Um, I, so, okay. so uh, <laughs> in, in other adventures, when we've when we've brought in Chef Albert D, he's uh, he's been a little bit aloof, and um, he uh, he 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 doesn't uh, doesn't really seem to have all his faculties there, but he's able to to uh, impart a little bit of wisdom with the meal. Uh, so, right. so would he send these kids to someplace potentially dangerous without knowing it? Absolutely. Uh, will he have <laughs> some kind of kind-hearted, uh, you know, ah, oh, you did a good job, buddy, uh, kind of quote at the end? 100%. Probably. <laughs> so I like this idea in chat that does the spice turn everyone into animals? And maybe the chef just knows that it enhances, like, the animal flavor. Oh, but it's yeah. not just the flavor; it actually enhances the animal ness. Like, oh wow! Yeah. That could be. I like it because then, the... like, you want to have a yeah. reason why why this why is this spice connected or important or whatever. The heroes can come back and impart an important lesson to Chef Albert D about spice consumption. <laughs> After school special, yeah. <laughs> you know, or you know. I know everybody in the chat is thinking it, so I might as well say it. Yeah. Spice. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. 
It's not just the orange on orange eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, well, let's, you know, and in, in the next more important part is let's look at the, what is the final confrontation? Like, where are we leading to? There's, right. a lot of, there's some steps in the middle, but what is, what is our, our goal? So we only got a few minutes left. So yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it feels like there's like an either like a government building or a factory or something where all the spice is kind of being siloed. Mm -hmm. But they have to get to and find where then they discover that their parents were the ones who were feeling all of this ridiculousness. I like okay. the factory idea because that brings us into the steampunk a little more. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and it is a factory setting, right? So of course I think yeah. the the flail snail is specifically a part of the factory, right? They've got to bash this uh this spice down into powder. So it goes down a conveyor and the flail smell, oh, yeah. snail just... <laughs> flail You know, maybe maybe there's a bunch of them the in the <laughs> um do the heroes need to free the flail snails? Are they accomplices? Do we fight them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think, I think in this final encounter, we will have, uh, we will have the villains. Uh, no, we'll have the, <laughs> the mayor of flail. the town. Yeah, we'll have the mayor of the town as the big bad, and the, um, and the parents are underpowered here because of the magic. So, and the parents are the goons. <laughs> And the PCs, they can convince flail snails uh, to leave their uh, poor, uh, their their station, and help the PCs. I just realized why it is that the that their parents might be interested in the spice. If if we're if we've established that the spice intensifies the animalness of somebody, perhaps they are trapped in this place and can't get out. And so, in order to be able to reach the their usual levels of power they must consume this spice and that's why they are also uh, like, helping to kind of like <laughs> hoard it yeah and maybe they're concentrating its power in this factory or mm. yeah oh my goodness right. uh, let's like, see here do a little puking little rainbow puke and then yeah no i think this is so good um the spice must flow all right so yeah, that was a very quick outline of an adventure that uh, I want to play. I think <laughs> that I yeah. want to play. It was uh, a great con game right here. Exactly. Uh -huh. This uh, this could be uh, this this may even end up being one of our one page adventures for the Patreon subscribers. Uh, so uh, you know, just remember, come take place and join in the chat with all this stuff, and you too could have your ideas misspelled by me on the screen <laughs> I, I, I would never say it justin never <laughs> it's an honor uh so uh uh aki uh where can the folks find you uh coming soon uh uh you can find me over on twitter at mix genie in a bottle that's m-x-g-i-n-i-i-n-a-b-o-t-t-l-e and you can find my entire twitch streaming schedule over on my personal twitch stream twitch.tv slash shidari aki that's S-H-I-D-A-R-E-A-K-I. -E uh, and the next thing I'll be doing is New Pantheon right after this. In fact, I'm about to run away so that I can start getting ready for that. That uh, is perfect. Yeah. Fair enough. Wonderful. Uh, it's so great to have you. <laughs> you. You can find me at AlphaStream on the Twitters. Uh, and my blog is alphastream.org. And that's uh, where you can join my mailing list and follow along when the Kickstarter launches. Awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, we'll be looking forward to that. And uh, Rich, do you have anything coming up this week that you want to shout out before we wrap this all up? Oh, gosh, no. I'm in planning phases right now. Um, but you can definitely follow along on Twitter at Armelina, where I uh, talk uh, too much about D&D uh, &D stuff. Um, and also my Academy of Adventures, where I run games for kids all week long. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. How and about you? You can always check me. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. And then you could always check me out on my uh, on my personal Twitch channel, DJ Pirate Rabbits, uh, and that's where I hop on uh, the stream and DJ house music. So uh, yeah, I'll see you all there, and uh, everyone stick around for uh, New Pantheon.